Hello and welcome to Whiteboard Sessions. My name is Andrew Maff. I am the founder and CEO of Blue Tusker, a full service digital marketing company for e-commerce sellers. And what I'm gonna show you today is exactly how we structure Google Ads campaigns for e-commerce sellers. We're gonna get into bidding and settings and different audiences and things like that at a different time. But what I really wanted to go through today is exactly just the high level top line of how we structure shopping, search, and Google display ads. And I'm gonna get into a couple different things here, specifically on the shopping side, where I'm gonna kinda of touch on whether that's even really good for your company or not, because everything I'm gonna tell you is basically gonna be based around the same concept, which is that every product, every business, every category, and every business owner are very different. So that means that sometimes these strategies don't always work, depending on what your certain goals are. But I'm gonna tell you how 90% of the time how we start off a Google Ads campaign, and then how we adjust from there as time goes on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna kick this off where I'm gonna show you how we start off with shopping. And shopping has three different types of campaigns, right? So you have a high priority, a medium priority, and a low priority campaign. So we're gonna pretend that we have one product line for now because really all you have to do is replicate this concept for however many product lines you have or if you have to get very specific with a product or anything along those lines. So basically we're gonna start off up here with a shopping campaign that's a high priority, right? So Basically what that means is that you're telling Google that this campaign is my main priority and that's how I wanna show my ads most. So usually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start these bids kinda low because in my eyes, this is essentially a prospecting campaign. This is where I'm learning, like what am I showing for? Is Google headed in the right direction? Because Google's gonna pull all that data from your description or your product title or your meta title or meta description depending on how you set up Merchant Center. Um, but I want to see like, okay, what am I showing for? So in this case, obviously it's a specific product line and I'm going to start to see like, okay, I'm showing for these terms very often. And then of course I'll go in and I'll negate them, which again, I'm going to get into that in a different video. We're just going to talk structure for now. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a medium priority. So it essentially works like this. So it's another shopping campaign with a medium priority. And basically what happens here is as I start to learn, okay, I have a term here that's doing really well. I'm gonna negate it. So I'm actually gonna tell Google, don't show me for that term that's doing well in the high priority now. What I wanna do is I'm actually gonna allow that to drop down to the medium priority. And I'm gonna increase this bid a little bit. So let's say this bid is at, I don't know, 50 cents, which might be a little high, but 50 cents for now. Um, and you're gonna have to adjust that as time goes on. Um, this isn't where I suggest you start. This is going to be very dependent on your product line, but let's just say 50 cents, which means this medium priority one, I'm probably going to do closer to 75, maybe to a dollar. And basically what's going to happen here is obviously, so I said, I'm going to negate the keyword that I said was doing really well. And that keyword is going to drop down into this medium priority where I'm now increasing my bid. So then that's where the low priority comes in. So now once I see, okay, that keyword is still doing well here and I'm justifying selling it at a certain cost. So I probably have these at a maximized conversion or something along those lines. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna negate it again and I'm gonna drop it down into a shopping low priority campaign. So now I have a low priority. And basically what I'm doing is I'm forcing this keyword that did really well down into the lowest priority. Now I see, I know it seems kind of backwards, at least it did to me when I first started doing this, where I was like, wouldn't the low priority be my highest priority because it's my best keywords, but it's just not how it works. Basically, Google's a little bit more selfish and wants to say that that's their high priority. So basically what's happening is you have a 50 cent bid here in this scenario as a high priority. I found a keyword that was doing really well, so I actually negated it. And then that's gonna cause it to drop down into the medium priority. Now something else to remember there, when you negate a keyword in the high priority and it drops down to the medium priority, that's what you want it to do. However, if you get a keyword in the high priority that you don't want and you're like, this keyword sucks, I don't want it, and then you negate it, it's going to drop down into the medium priority. So what you need to do is create a list in keywords, uh, I'm sorry, in the high priority campaign, so that when you negate it, you can actually add that list as another negative keyword thing to reference for the medium priority as well as the low priority so that when you negate it here, it also negates it through all three. Whereas if you find a keyword that works really well, you're gonna keep that one out of the list. So basically what happens is you negate it, it drops down to the medium priority. So then your 75 cent bid is now high, bidding higher for that specific keyword. Then what happens is it comes down to here 
And now we have that keyword in my low priority, and I'm gonna make this bid, I mean, a bare minimum a dollar, probably even higher, depending on what my ROAS that I'm looking for is. But if I can justify a higher bid and I go, okay, I know I'm converting at a certain percentage, then basically what's gonna happen is I'm now bidding incredibly high on one very specific keyword. So when you hear all these people talk about like, you know, how do you hyper bid on shopping campaigns because of the way that these things work, this is literally how it is. So it's basically like a giant funnel, right? So you're basically funneling all these keywords that Google's finding for you and just shoving them down into the very bottom of the funnel so that you're focusing on your low priority campaign. So that's your shopping. So now at this point, once you've gotten all that data and you've gotten it down to here, you've pretty much started to own that top carousel where all the shopping products are so that you're actually, basically, your product's showing up first most of the time if you've got that bid high enough. So now, how do you own more real estate? This is where search campaigns come in. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take all the keywords that I know I'm triggering for in the low priority and maybe the medium priority, that one's gonna be up to you. Um, but I'm gonna create what I kind of refer to as like a top campaign, it's just, or a success campaign, you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. But basically I'm gonna create a top search campaign. So search campaign, right? So we're gonna take all of these top keywords and we're gonna drive them over to this top search campaign. And I'm gonna just make those exact match. So basically I already know that I'm converting for this keyword. So I already know that I'm gonna convert for it here. Some people like the, are visual shoppers, so they see the picture and the product uh, in the shopping carousel. And some people are readers, so they're actually gonna read more information about your product. And maybe there's something that your picture is not giving away. So maybe you wanna get a little bit more specific in the copy here, right? So this is basically how we start to move over all of our top shopping campaigns into what we refer to as a top uh, search campaign. Now this whole funnel structure can work the same with search campaigns. So now let's say we're starting to get a few conversions here that we like, but maybe are too far in between. And then we have a bunch here that we like that are doing well. So what I'll actually do is create another campaign, which this will just be a typical prospecting campaign, but on the search side. So this is my top, and then this is gonna be my prospecting search campaign. So this one I'll probably have my bid um, as a maximized conversions. So basically I'm gonna allow Google to figure out whatever it wants to bid as long as I'm converting. So we'll set this to a maximize conversions, and I'm gonna set all of these to phrase match. So the reason I'm gonna set all those to phrase match is because I know I'm converting for these and I know which search terms are showing up, but I'm not sure, I'm not converting at the best rate that I want to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a phrase match. So that basically I can start to learn, okay, here's a very specific term that I'm, that I'm converting for. So then what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did here. I'm gonna negate that keyword here and I'm gonna move it down to here and I'm gonna change it into another exact match. So this campaign right here, my top search campaign, is going to be just exact match. There's gonna be nothing else in it. This one is going to be just phrase match. There's gonna be nothing else in it. My personal opinion, don't use broad match in Google Ads for search campaigns at all. The way that broad match ads work now, it's incredibly difficult to control because it's not as simple as if you're running Amazon ads where it's kind of like, you know, words can go in between words. It's actually more of like a, if it sounds like this or if it looks like this or it's just Google's algorithm and it, I don't like it because it gets too uncontrollable. So I focus a little bit more on phrase match and I let my um, high priority shopping campaign do all the prospecting for me. And then this one's a little bit more specific so I'm not wasting too much, but it's also prospecting for me. So they're all gonna drop down to here. So you can see here, these are my two big guys, right? These are my two campaigns where I go, okay, I'm converting at a really good level here. This one, what I'm gonna do a little bit differently is that this is a maximized conversion. I'm gonna change this one to a target uh, ROAS or a target CPA, depending on what you're doing. Some people might have the ability, you might be selling a B2B product and might also be doing leads, in which case a CPA might be better for you. If you're doing leads, you wanna use a target CPA. If you have the ability to pull in conversion value for everything that you're doing, which most e-commerce sellers do, then you're gonna to wanna to do a target ROAS because you have that data to provide to Google and you wanna make sure that they have that. So basically what's happening here, just a, a quick recap of the shopping to search side is high priority campaign, find a great keyword, negate it, low bid, drop it down to a medium priority, slightly higher bid, 
then another same keyword might still be doing well. Great, we've confirmed it. Let's drop it down to a low priority. And now my low priority is my highest bid possible that I'm okay with spending. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything that shows up down here, I'm gonna move it up into this top search campaign where I have only exact match terms and I'm doing a target ROAS. So I know that even though these are exact match, I'm gonna control how much money I'm making on it. So if you're looking for a 3X return, you can do a 3X ROAS on this or 300% ROAS and be able to target exactly how much you wanna spend on that specific keyword. Then up here, I'm gonna create something similar to these two as a phrase match. And every time I find a search term that's specific that I know works well, I'm gonna make it another exact match and put it in here. So most of my budget after time has gone on, you've gotten enough data, is going to be in these two because I want my bid to be as high as possible. I wanna be first and I wanna know that I'm getting my return that I wanna hit. And I never want my ads to shut off at any time during the day or at any day of the week, unless obviously that was what you intended to do, which is bidding, which I'll get into in another uh, video. But essentially most of my budget's gonna be here and then the rest of your budget's gonna be up here, right? So these are kind of like your testing ads. So this basically covers the shopping and the um, search campaigns. So now let's talk about display. Here's my problem with display. There's a couple things on, on the display side. One, you don't have as much control as you would want. Two, I actually prefer personally to use AdRoll because AdRoll essentially connects to Google and uses all of Google's real estate like you would in Google, but it also does the same for Bing or Microsoft ads. So now you're actually getting to leverage both sides where you can use as much real estate as you want. And they also have some websites where they're able to be featured on there also. So basically you get a lot more um, reach with what you're doing on AdRoll. However, you can do the same stuff on Google. So it's kind of irrelevant. So basically all I prefer to do is just one retargeting for a display ad, right? So basically anyone who got sent that way and just wasn't re ready to convert yet, they're getting retargeted with something specific to whatever it is they searched. So if it's a search campaign that I'm doing, I'm obviously sending them to let's say a collections page uh, if you're using Shopify or it, any kind of category, right? So let's say you're sending them to a category. In that case, I wanna retarget them with whatever that specific category is. So if we're selling, oh, uh, I don't know, dry erase markers, right? We have a bunch of dry erase stuff, we have these whiteboards, we have all this stuff, but they went through my marker campaign and these are all based on markers. And then the, ad, the landing page that they landed on was all about markers. What I want this to look like is all my creative is gonna be just markers. So I might have multiple retargeting ad groups, um, sorry, or you could do an ad group, but you could have retargeting campaigns where basically the creative is really catered towards what it is they saw because you want it to be as personal as possible. You could get it down to what specific product that they saw, which is completely up to you. They also have it where you can do it as dynamic, so it will show the product for you, but that's fine. The only other time that I'm using display ads outside of retargeting is A, if you wanna try targeting a certain audience. So if you're gonna target a certain audience, basically what you wanna do is you gotta think about the product. So in, the, in this case, you're presenting a solution to someone who wasn't actively searching for it. In shopping campaigns, someone was actively looking for your product. In search campaigns, someone was actively looking for your product. In display ads, if you're retargeting, they looked for your product and chose not to purchase. If you do something where your audience targeting, they're not looking for your product, you're just showing it to them in hopes that they are relevant to who you're looking for. So that is one way to do it. That's gonna come down to your product line because that might not always be the case. If you think about something that's like a last minute purchase, uh, so maybe dry erase markers, could work okay for audience, but the audience is a little broad, so I may not suggest it. But if you're thinking something along the lines of something more specific, so they looked for a specific printer or something that you're actually, that they know you were going after a certain model or something, then maybe I'll do audience, but that's, again, that's gonna be on a case by case basis. The only other time I'm gonna do display is if I'm doing some kind of campaign. So maybe I have a new product that came out, or maybe I have a sale that we're doing, or maybe some seasonal theme that we're going for. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a warm audience campaign where essentially we're targeting people who have visited your site before and didn't purchase, people who did purchase. If you can integrate your list, then do that. So basically anyone who already is familiar with your brand, then I'm gonna send them 
the ads to whatever sale we're doing or whatever new product line release because they're more likely to convert. The prospecting of an audience would be a little bit more difficult. It's going to be a little bit more expensive just because of how much you're, you have. So that's going to be a little bit dependent on where your budget's at. But your warm audience is more likely to convert. So this is essentially exactly how we set up ads, I would say 90% of the time. It's going to completely come down to your product line. If you have a really specific product line, so maybe you're selling, um, let's say, replacement parts. So you're doing replacement ink for printers and someone looks for a very specific ink that you have. You probably want to do a bunch of these where you have it maybe broken down by brand or maybe broken down by printer brand. And then you want to just start to negate everything that you don't have, obviously, until you get down to this low priority and then set this up. Um, retargeting would probably be all, all I would do in that situation. But there's a ton of different situations, but this is essentially how we do it. So if you're watching this video, you're obviously on our YouTube channel. If you have a specific product and you want to know how should you structure it, just comment and either myself or someone on our team will get back to you and give you our advice on how necessary this setup may be. But I'm going to tell you 90% of the time, this is exactly how we do it. So I appreciate you watching the video. This is how we structure our Google ads. If you ever want to have a question, you can obviously comment below. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you didn't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep an eye out because I'm going to be doing a bunch of these more so that you can actually get some insight. And if there's something else you want me to cover, feel free to comment and I will make sure that we uh, tackle it next time. Thanks.